how to use the universal laser cutter. When planning your model, there are several things you can do in advance to make sure your laser cutting experience is as efficient as possible. You may want to come down to the shop before your scheduled time to audit the available materials in the architectural materials store. This might include measuring material thicknesses, getting a sense of scale, learning tolerances, and perhaps getting a knowledge on how to adhere or connect various materials. Before your laser time, it would be smart to lay out your sheets in advance to make sure your line work is clear of unwanted geometries and is distilled down to the least elements possible. For example, removing double or overlaid lines. If you have a big project and you're only booked an hour, it will more than likely not be enough time. Come downstairs and ask technicians how long they think it will take to print your project and they will tell you how long to book accordingly. First things first, you don't have to turn on the dust extractor switch. The next step is turning the laser cutter on. You can do this by reaching towards the back of the machine and then flipping the switch. Typically, the machines are already turned on in the morning. The next step is going to be loading your material. You don't need to autofocus, just pop your material in and it should be fine. It would be wise to purchase your materials prior to your scheduled laser time, so you're not wasting your own laser time. If you're looking to save time, maybe use thinner or paper material over thicker or wood as thicker material will take longer for the laser to etch through. If the edges of your material do not lay flat on the machine, you should tape the edges of your material on the machine so it can flatten out. Following this, you may gently close the machine's door. If the door is not fully closed, a blinking red light will appear and the laser will not edge. Make sure these sensors on the machine are clear of any obstructions, and you'll know that the sensors are fine and clear when the door is closed and no red lights are flashing. Once everything is placed, there's no red lights flashing, nothing more has to be changed. You never have a need to touch the buttons on the front of the machine. Open the Rhino 3D file. Templates can be found on the Ryerson DAS website or from the laser computers in the shop. Ensure your lines are on the appropriate layer, cut, edge, or raster. To do this, simply match properties or select the appropriate lines and move them to the correct layer. You can do this on the properties menu. By doing this, you will ensure all settings are attributed to your line work without having to complete the step yourself. If you're hatching, please hatch all areas with a solid fill. Finally, the print width should be set at hairline, the line type should be set at continuous, and then following both of those steps, you can confirm that all the line works are within the inside border of the template box. Type print and then go to the print setup menu. You'll need to confirm the following settings. The template should already be defaulted to these settings, but it is good practice to check. Confirm the cut file by selecting print on the print setup menu. Now we're going to open up our laser software. The universal control panel can be found as a red box in the bottom right of the start menu. Hit the settings menu, then go to the material database at the top left of the pop-up menu. Select material, then press plus to activate the drop-down menu. When you select a material, you are applying all the settings to all three layers that were used in the template. Hit OK, then press play. When it's printing, if something does go wrong, you may hit pause. But if you press play again after hitting pause, your project will restart from the beginning. If you do press pause, please ensure that you press pause again in order to make sure that your project restarts from where you left it off instead of going back and restarting from the beginning. Things can catch on fire. If they do, make sure you suffocate the fire and the air. You can use water and tissues and make sure you vacuum the V-sheet afterwards. 
always watch your sheet even if you're there for two hours for two hours you have to be watching your sheet only you know how the sheet should be processed if something is incorrect you must be attentive and ready to pause or stop the machine for any troubleshooting that may occur personal protective equipment is available the equipment includes masks face shields gloves and laser safety goggles if you don't like the outcome of your project Speak to a technician and you can increase or decrease the settings surrounding your project. As you're waiting for your sheet to be cut, you'll know it's done when the ulcer travels to its home position in the top right of the machine. Once you're finished cutting, don't just open up the door due to fumes. Wait at least 10 to 30 seconds for the fume chamber to clear out. After this, open the door and pull everything out. However, it may be easier to tape the cutout pieces together. Tape the cutout pieces to the rest of your sheet so the pieces do not fall out when you pull the sheet out of the machine. Once you've taped your sheet together and pulled it out, make sure that you clear the printer of all debris to ensure that future projects have an equal depth. If done, close the door and leave. If not, put in your next sheet and start again. Finally, please be mindful of the schedule and respectful to other students who are using a laser lab, especially during deadlines. Make sure you keep your materials and parts in a dedicated location so that you do not get anything mixed up with your peers. Bring a container to collect parts is highly recommended. As always, if you have any questions or concerns throughout the process of laser cutting, please speak to a workshop technician.